Hello, this is Rohan Shah with Far From Standard Tutoring. Today we'll be exploring the limit definition of an integral. Well, this is another story that my imaginary friend told me. So, it's the year 1600 something, and Newton was there, and everyone was there, and he just discovered what a derivative was, and oh my god, it was crazy, and he was a celebrity, and it was crazy. So anyways, so now, there was this big other question in mathematics. How do you find the area underneath something that's not a rectangle? So, here we have this graph, it's a parabola. And all the mathematicians at the Mathematician Senate meeting were like, hmm, it's very remarkable, no one's been able to solve that. And Newton comes into the room. Oh, it's Newton again, okay, straight faces, straight faces. And then he comes in, hey guys, hey guys, all right, all right, all right, so here, I think, I think, I have it. Here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna do. Now, we're all grown men, right? We all know how to find the area of rectangles, right? Well, that's all we really need to do. That's my thoughts. So, let's say you have this guy. Let's, we want to find the area between 0 and 4 of the parabola. And so, here are my thoughts. What if we break it up into rectangles and just, you know, do it that way? So, there are four intervals over here, as you can see. So, let's look at the interval in any interval if we just look at the rightmost point the y value on the rightmost point and just you know to estimate it assume that that's the y value throughout the entire interval instead of just the rightmost point then we'll have effectively a rectangle instead of a weird shape like a parabola so we will have this then we'll have this other rectangle where the y value is 4 between x values of 1 and 2 another one where the y value is 9 Another one where the y value is 16. So now we have these four rectangles. Yeah? And so this area, it sure, it gives us an overestimate. I realize that. But let's find its area anyways. And we know it's an overestimate. Let's call this the right-handed sum, the sum of the areas of all the rectangles. So the first rectangle, well, clearly, what's the magical formula that we finally discovered? Length times width. So here the length is 1 and the width is 1. So 1 plus, now let's look at rectangle number 2. The length is 4 and the width is 2. So 4, uh, sorry, the width is 1. Aha! Yeah, that's an easy uh, trick to fall into, guys. So make sure that you don't do that. This is 1, although it looks like 2. So 1 times 4, that's 4, plus 9 times 1, which is 9, plus 16 times 1, which is 16. So the right-handed sum is, uh, well, as we can see, 5 plus 9, which is 14, plus 16, which is 30. So that is an overestimate, but now let's do the same thing, except this time instead of looking at the, guy, the y value on the right and assuming that that's the y value in the entire interval, let's look at the one on the left. So looking at that same graph, the y value on the left is 0, so we're going to assume that the y value on this rectangle is 0 for the entire first interval. So that's really, the area over there is zero. The second one will look like this. The third one like this, and the fourth one like this. Again, we're taking in this interval, the y value on the left, which is nine, for the entire interval. Now, as we can see, this is an underestimate because we're not taking into account all these regions. But if you look at the LHS now, that's zero, that's the area over here, plus one, one times one, plus four, four times one, and finally plus nine, which is the, uh, it's 9 times 1. So that is just going to give us 14. So this is an overestimate and this is an underestimate, right people? Well, um, a friend of mine just discovered a magical way uh, to do, th it's called an average. So what we can do is let's just take the average of these two numbers and that will give us exactly what the area is, you know, in, be in between these two. So I can rightfully conclude that 30, here's how you find the average, you add these two and then you just divide it by two. So 44 divided by two, that's 22. So I'm proposing that the area is 22. All right, well, prove it. What do you mean prove it? I, I don't like proving. Ha ha, he can't prove it, he can't prove it. Everyone started laughing at him again. He just ran home, same situation happened. Now, hundreds of years later, we know that 22 is not the answer. What is the right answer? Let's actually try to find out for ourselves what the right answer is. Well, we know that the way to solve it is using the integral. We'd look at the integral between 
0 and 4 of x squared dx. The integral of that is just x cubed over 3 as we go from 0 to 4. Plugging in 4 and 0, we get 4 cubed, which is 64 over 3, minus 0 cubed over 3, which is just 0. And that gives us just 64 over 3, which is 21.333. So Newton was actually not too far off. Back to the story. All right, guys. Oh, he's coming in. He's coming, he's coming into the room again. All right, guys. All right, guys. Ah, I have it. I have the proof. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what I noticed. Here I took four intervals. That was just kind of random. But instead, what if I take two intervals? Just two intervals. Well, in the same graph, then you'll have two, four, like this. 4, 16 like this. Now, the RHS is 2 times 4, 8, plus 16 times 2, which is 32, and that's 40. The LHS, using this method, 2, 0 over here, because the LHS, uh, the left-handed y value is 0, plus 4 times 2, 8, 0 and 8. So here we get 48 divided by 2, which is 24. But now, notice that these are way far apart. The LHS and the RHS here are a lot more far apart than the LHS and the RHS here. So this actually gives us a better estimate than this. So I would actually think that even if this isn't the right answer, 22 might not be the right answer, it's closer to the right answer than 24 is because we're getting better. So what I'm proposing, guys, is that we take an infinite number of rectangles. Oh, no, there he goes with that infinity crap again. So here's how we're, so we can, if we just take an infinite number of rectangles, then each rectangle's length uh, will just be the y value and each rectangle's width, which we'll just, let's call that dx. That's sort of, you know, the difference between the x, uh, you know, the two x values. So the difference between the two x values, well, that's just going to be, if we call this point b, the ending point, and a, then that's just b minus a divided by the number of rectangles we have. So if we have n rectangles, that's just going to be that. So now, if we have an infinite number of rectangles, then we know that the area of each rectangle will be the y value times, you know, that width, which was dx. And we're going to take the sum of all those rectangles. We're going to add them all up, the sum of all of that. And what we're, of course, going to do this as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. And I think this is what we can use to find the area underneath any curve. And then integral calculus was born. So years later, we now know that this translates something. This symbol turns into this, and then it's just f of x dx. So now when you look at this, you'll actually know where each of these comes from. This is the y value, and this is the uh, width, so the length and the width of each rectangle, and this you're just adding up an infinite number of them. Well, I hope this makes sense to you now, and Thank you for tuning in to this calculus video series. Stay tuned next year for the Calc 2 video series. Thank you, and good luck.